Belgium, tell us more about your journey to become a pilot. Well, my journey to become a pilot started when I was 15 and I wanted to become a, a female Top Gun fighter pilot. But unfortunately, I, the Air Force rejected my candidacy and it was very hard to swallow that because I thought I would never become a pilot. But then uh, when you have that aviation virus, you just never give up. So thanks to the money I earned of working and the bank loan I got, I got the opportunity to begin my studies for my commercial uh, course. And that was not easy either because uh, it was very hard, especially the theory. And the practical part was very demanding too. But you know, my aviation school doesn't produce an average pilot. It is either you're a good pilot or you are out. So, but perseverance pays off. And actually one week ago, before getting here to China, I successfully completed my commercial pilot license. Well, thank you so much, Belgium. Thank you. Belgium. What I have learned from my country that, I could, that we could teach to other countries is that my country, Belgium, embraces and respects the beauty of diversity, if I may say the minorities. Um, me winning Miss Belgium as a Belgian by birth and by law with Filipino origins has showed the world that we may have different physical or cultural uh, differences, but after all, we all bleed the same blood. We have this national motto, it says L'Union fait la force, Eén draagt maakt macht. And um, it says that we strongly believe in unity that comes with equality, that together we can be a stronger nation or even rather a stronger world. Thank you so much, Belgium. Thank you. Mexico, in your video, you said you've worked with 18 organizations. Why did you decide to work with so many different organizations? Well, I think there's also different. You learn different things from all of them. Like, for example, the rehab center, you come there and see the girls after four months and they transform. So it's kind of like magic. And then you go and work with people with disabilities and they show you the purest form of love. It's truly unconditional love. And then you go and work with the indigenous kids. And it's, it's weird because you look at the future because you're working with their education. And, and these are the kids that will become the future of Mexico, but you're looking at the past because they have all our traditions, all our history, our culture. And then you get to know the stories and you know their names and their families and they become family. When you, when you start caring, people become family and you can't abandon your family. It's a commitment for life. So I can't leave them. I just, I just have to keep working for them. Now you're basically, it seems like a full-time volunteer. <laughs> yeah. So what would you say to someone who has a full-time job, has a career, has a, has a child, but also wants to give back to their community? Like I, I say that everyone can help. Like if you can give your time, you can give money. If you can give no money or time, you can pass on the voice. And maybe someone who can help will hear from you and will do something. So everyone can help. Maybe in the tiniest, biggest way, but you can do something about everyone that surrounds you. Thank you so much, Mexico. Thank you. But who is one historical figure you think the world could learn from today? Like, I think Aruba and I have similar points of view on this. I would say Nelson Mandela as well. Of course, we know he fought for equality, he fought for democracy, he fought for education. But I think like, there's so much more that we have to learn from him, like stay, staying true to your beliefs. He spent 27 years in prison. He, even, he was offered a deal to come out and he refused it because he was against all the things he believed in. He even got a law degree while he was in it and he educated other prisoners there. And when he came out, he still fought for the rights of minorities, even white minorities, who put him in jail. So I think there's a lot we can learn from him about forgiveness, and we need that now. Thank you, Mexico. Thank you. Trinidad and Tobago, your education background is clearly very impressive. Why did you choose Oxford, and what did you learn most? Well, actually, it was my grandmother that inspired me the most. My great-great-grandparents came as human cargo from India to work on the sugar plantations in Trinidad and Tobago. And my grandmother really wanted to be a doctor, but she wasn't able to be. But that's why she pushed my, myself and my mom to, into education so that we could study and have more opportunities that she was not able to have. And so for me, to be able to attend an institution as academically rigorous and as prestigious as Oxford University was for her just the culmination of all her dreams for herself 
and for me and for my mom and for all the other immigrants who crossed the oceans to come to Trinidad and Tobago. At Oxford, I gained a lot of knowledge and I was so fortunate to be tutored by leading academics and to undertake internships all over Europe. But what I learned the most was just that if you work hard and you're committed and you're dedicated, you can achieve anything you want to. And I know that if my grandmother was here today, she would be so proud of me. I'm sure she would. Thank you so much, Trinidad and Tobago. The question is, what is the greatest difficulty you've had to overcome in your life and how did you achieve it? Well, growing up, I was really, really shy and I lacked self-confidence. I think that I was always trying to fit in a, in a particular mold of what people wanted or expected me to be. So my challenge was very personal. It was just about learning to love myself for who I am and learning to embrace the fact that I'm a real nerd and I would always rather be in a library at any given point in the day. And I overcame that by making it my purpose and embracing those qualities. So it's actually my Beauty with a Purpose project. I promote education and literacy in Trinidad and Tobago. And I feel so much more at peace with myself now that I really have embraced my purpose in life. Thank you. Ecuador, tell us more about the volunteer work you do in your country. Thank you, Frankie, for your question. I'm going to answer in Spanish, right? Of course. <laughs> so, um, yo creo que todos nacimos para ayudar. Y creo que mi propósito es ayudar a quienes más lo necesitan. Por eso siempre he estado involucrada en proyectos de caridad, en organizaciones de voluntariado de escasos recursos a mejorar su calidad de vida, especialmente a los niños, niñas y adolescentes, porque creo que ellos son los seres más inocentes y en ocasiones los más vulnerables de nuestra sociedad. Creo que siempre he venido trabajando para combatir eh, la mendicidad y el trabajo infantil, porque en Latinoamérica las tasas son bastante altas. Yo inclusive tuve que trabajar desde los siete años y sé lo importante que es tener a alguien que te dé la mano. Y por eso estoy aquí, porque yo quiero ser esa mano que ayude al mundo a mejorar su calidad de vida. Por eso estoy aquí, porque quiero ser ese alguien que ayude al mundo a mejorar día a día. Y creo que eso es mi work y creo que ese es mi propósito. Thank you, Ecuador. <laughs> Ecuador, if you were employed as a spokesperson for Sanya Tourism, how would you bring more tourists to Sanya? Este es un tema del cual me encanta hablar porque soy una futura profesional en turismo. Y yo he visto en los pocos días que Sanya tiene turismo, tiene mucho para mostrarle al mundo. Es un lugar encantador, es un lugar mágico que nos transporta y nos llena de energía a todos. Y yo lo que haría, ya que las redes sociales ahora son mediáticas, sería promocionarlo a través de fotos y videos, mostrando a la gente todo lo que Sanya tiene tiene para dar al mundo. Yo he visto que tiene islas, tiene un clima hermoso, la comida es deliciosa, la gente, la cultura y la tradición de Sanya es encantadora. Y a mí, como futura profesional en turismo, me encantaría trabajar como una embajadora del turismo en Sanya, ya que Sanya es uno de los lugares más encantadores que he visto. Thank you, Ecuador. And tell us what play therapy is and why you chose to study it. Um, actually, um, children love to play, like everyone knows, and it's actually their, their kind of language. And for adults, we, um, we, want, uh, we usually express our feelings and emotions uh, verbally, yeah? But for children, they don't have a set of vocabulary in their mind because they're so young and they don't have the ability to do it. And so they uh, usually use play to express themselves. So through the um, pr uh, playing process, they can choose whatever they want to play. They are like the boss in the room and um, they can choose from like sands, puppets, dolls and um, drawings like different mediums and during the process for the observer you will see like um, how they ex uh, we will try to understand like what they want to express during their play yeah we will not disturb them or um, uh, ask them to do whatever uh, uh, anything but just observing and try to understand their inner feelings and it is know that like um, for play therapy they can help to um, facilitate and regulate 
their confidence and a social behavior and even help them to heal the inner traumas. And so um, I find it very interesting. And the reason why I chose to do further studies on it is because I really like children and I find it very interesting. Like they ex when they're exploring the world, they're always so happy and curious and excited. And um, although I'm doing modeling job at the moment, but I was always hoping to work with children in the future. And also if it's possible to, pro uh, to be their protector. And so in order to achieve my dreams, uh, it's necessary for me to enhance my skills and knowledge and in order to help them because children is our hope and future in the society. Yeah. Now, if a children chooses the sandbox versus uh, crayons, does that actually mean something in your studies? No, actually, no. Um, if you want to know, for example, um, their anger, usually the children will choose something like um, guns, knives and hammers, this kind of um, toys. But for drawings and scent, um, they're actually just it's actually a medium for them to express. Uh, we have to see like what they're gonna put in the sand or what they're gonna draw in the sand in order to know their inner feelings. And uh, also for drawings as well, yeah. Okay, thank you very much, thank Hong Kong, you. China. Hong Kong, China, what global problem would you most like to solve and how would you like to solve it? Mm, there are a lot of global problems um, that I care for, but to me, what is closest to my heart is women's rights. Um, women have come a long way, like we have uh, better educations and we have more accomplishments nowadays. Um, but um, coming from a place where women are always seen as the subordinates of men, um, we still have a lot of barriers to overcome and it's going to be a constant uphill uh, challenge. But um, I believe that um, by getting more involved um, in social, economic and political, like we can make better changes. And also um, for there are more places that women can have free choice and also um, we can um, have the rights to speak. I think we should exercise this right and that can make some changes, yeah. And also um, I feel like the young um, people nowadays, they are not that involved in this issue. It might be because they're a bit um, despair or um, they are too focused in their um, career. So I would say that I would like to educate them uh, by raising awareness and um, encourage them to um, get involved in the community by maybe voting, um, joining unions and so on. I think that like one people cannot make changes, but together we can. Thank you, Hong Kong, China. Thank you.